so good morning everyone so you know like today i want to discuss one more interesting topic that is you know how how to measure client side performance you know with uh, jmeter yeah. how to measure client side performance with jmeter any uh, okay so you know uh, so suppose you sent a request from the browser right you typed you know uh, some gmail.com or ircdc.co.in or apple.com right so let me you know open an incognito browser and say for example you typed apple.com right <coughs> so if you observe here you know <coughs> there are a lot of high resolution pics right as well as you know like uh, if you see the developer tools right there will be lot of you know Uh, css files and javascript files okay so let me open the developer tools and you know uh, do a control refresh right <coughs> you know right so what what happens when you use control refresh you know right otherwise you know we can do refresh also as this is incognito browser you can use you know even though you refresh this page right I, it should not load from cache actually it should not load anything from cache it should load from the it should send the request to the server and get all the components right <clears throat> now if you observe here so if you observe this you know you have lot of you know javascript files and css files see here okay let me do this thing so you can filter the urls you know here you have an option to filter the urls suppose by default observe here all is ch checked right all is selected all means you know all the page components right suppose if you select js right it will load all the javascript files right so this only this particular home page has you know see how many javascript files it has <coughs> it has 11 javascript files guys right so it has it has 11 javascript files and you know suppose let us see how many css files are So there are around seven. Seven. There are seven CSS uh, uh, CSS files, right? So what is this CSS file? What is the purpose of this this uh, CSS files? Layout design. Yes. Designing the layouts. They define the layout of the page, right? So what is meant by what is meant by defining layout? So. when we have more number of you know this javascript files and css files in a page right so it will take some time to render the response in the in the browser browser will take some time to render the response in the page right is it clear guys that is called as browser rendering time uh, please give me a moment So you know, but basically this web protocol in Load Runner, or you know, uh, uh, so in JMeter, what is the protocol that we are using, guys? For UI testing, for you know, for web tools or JPEG store applications or AOS, what is the protocol that we use? HTTP or HTTPS. HTTP, HTTPS, right? So because you know, if you remember, we use a HTTP request sampler. You remember that, right? Yes. okay now <clears throat> so either it is load runner or it is jmeter right so when the moment you know the transaction time will be considered as the time spent from the moment you send the request right so you sent a request from a browser so at that time you know it will start measuring the response rate right so and you know like it will so and your request will go to the web server application server and database server and you know it will come back all the way from database server so app server will process the logic and it will um, it will fetch the required data from database server if required right if required it will establish a connection with the i mean it doesn't establish a connection it will fetch a, what does it do to get a connection database connection where is our uh, resource pool huh It is. It will take from database pool. Yeah, it picks a connection, connection from the connection, connection, connection pool. pool. From yeah. the connection pool, it doesn't establish a connection because establishing a database connection is time-consuming operation, right? 
so whenever you know database server is started right it will create some connections and keep it in a pool so whenever a user comes right so you know one connection will be database connection will be assigned to that user and the moment you know he is done the query is processed right the connection will be returned to the pool so that it will be available for other users right so once you know gets the data app server get the data from database it will process that and it will send the response to web server and web server sends the response back to the browser right now so while sending this response right so you know once once the browser receives the you know once the browser receives last byte of the response right so the transaction will be measured till that point only right your response time will be measured till that point only uh, web protocol so basically i am taking telling about you know web protocol so but it however it doesn't measure the browser rendering time so it doesn't measure how much time it is taking the browser is taking to render the response is it clear so far so your transaction response time which is measured by web protocol right so it consists of processing time on web server processing time on application server and processing time on database server and network latency between the servers and the client right so network latency means how much time it spent on the network right all these uh, you know servers will be connected with the network right so you know uh, and also like our request should travel over the internet right from our browser our request should travel over the internet and you know and also it will spend time some time between these servers right so that is you know uh, so your transaction response time consists of only those <coughs> only those you know processing time on web app db server and the response time sent on the uh, sorry network latency between the servers or time spent in the network is it clear so far guys but you know like however if you if your browser rendering time is more right if your page is taking more time to load right so that will not be measured by this web protocol right so to capture end user experience to capture the end user real end user experience right we need to measure the page rendering time also page rendering time means time spent by the browser to render the response in the to render the response in the browser right so you know like in loadrunner we can measure that with true client protocol right in loadrunner provides a protocol separate protocol for that which is called as true client protocol why it is called true client is it will truly measure the client experience that's why it is called as true client protocol is it clear so far i'll take a pass here now we know with jmeter right so you know uh, so with jmeter if you want to measure the uh, you know if you want to measure the rendering time as well right if you want to measure the client side performance as well right so this is called as client side performance uh, analysis right so if you want to measure the client side performance analysis so you know we have an option called you know uh, selenium web driver right we have something called selenium let me present this and you know let me explain you again one more time so basically web driver sampler there is something called web driver sampler in jmeter it automates the execution and collection of performance metrics on the browser browser means on the client side right so you know when we have this uh, uh, yeah so a large part of performance testing up to this point has been on the server side of things so we have seen like how to monitor the server side metrics and all till now right so you know like we can you know we can use any uh, we can use we use the perform uh, plugin uh, to monitor the server side metrics right or else you can use some other you know third party tools open source tools like uh, you know uh, in plus db graph now and you know there are other several other ways to monitor on server side metrics right but on the if you want to measure the client side metrics right so you know we have this you know we have to go for this selenium web driver something called selenium web driver so however with the advancement of technology that is you know now html5 is the latest version seems like and javascript js and css improvements more and more logic and behavior has been has been pushed to the client right means there is a lot of client side processing involved nowadays you know javascript does that client side processing right 
so and you know like so more and more logic and behavior has been pushed to the client means several things are executed at the browser end on the browser side itself okay so this adds to the overall perceived performance of website or web app but this metric is not available in jmeter so by default you know you don't have any any way to measure that in jmeter right so things that add to the overall browser browser execution time can include client side javascript execution for example ajax js templates javascript templates so you know uh, so what all can add to the browser execution time is browser execution time means once it receives the response browser receives the response from the server it should execute if there is if there is any javascript or anything css it has to execute those those you know javascript and css and html5 right so these are all the things which are adding to the browser execution time so the first one is client side javascript execution all right and css transforms for example 3d matrix transforms animations if there are any animations right or you know like uh, you have that uh, i mean css uh, does that job right so 3d matrix transforms and animations right and third party plugins for example facebook like double click uh, double click ad site analytics etc so so you know you need not remember everything you just need to understand that uh, there are there is there are lot of javascript files and css files uh nowadays you know uh, with most of the websites most of the applic web applications right so these all these things add to the overall browser execution time and this web driver aims to measure the time it takes to complete rendering all this content to render all the to measure the rendering time of all this content which content javascript css and you know third party plugins etc right so you know uh, web driver provides a solution for that is it clear so far yes kishan clear now what you know uh, what is meant by you know scrambled page actually your actual page should should uh, look like this right i have just shown you if you get to you know if browser is able to browser is able to render the page properly you, it should look like this however you know sometimes you know you see scrambled pages like this right so you got the response from the server right but you know it is not rendered properly right and you know let me i am i should have one more you know one more screenshot and hmm. scrambled page magic fix okay let me show you see you got the response from the server but you know it is not rendered the browser is unable to render that properly because of some issues with you know maybe some issues with css files or uh, css files basically here right so you are not seeing the proper page like this right so you know it because of some issue with the css files right so so right now you understood right you know like what you know <coughs> what happens if browser you know doesn't render the page properly sir no sir right now you know to measure that you know in jmeter we have something called you know uh, selenium web driver let me go to the slide right and uh, yeah so all these things add to the overall browser execution time and this web driver aims to measure the time it takes to complete rendering of all this rendering all this content right now so how to use this you know uh, selenium web driver client side performance using web driver right so these are the steps there, there are six steps so the first one is you launch jmeter and add a plugin called selenium web driver support right you add a you know yeah uh, you know that comes as a plugin right so you need to plug in, uh, download that plugin or install that plugin called you know selenium web driver support and you create a test pan and add a third group and add a config element called you know chrome driver config so uh, here you know you will have one config file for every browser so for chrome you have this chrome driver config you know if it is firefox you have firefox driver config and all right and add a sampler called web driver sampler and you add a listener called view results so i will show you step by step all these steps right and then download chrome driver.exe and provide the location in the chrome driver config add scripts in the web driver sampler add scripts in the web driver sampler and then you know replay the script and validate so let's see this you know step by step right so but you know uh, 
uh, I kept a note here. So when you do this, what happens is your JMeter will actually open a browser. It will actually open a browser, and you know it will measure the to measure the time like rendering time. It will actually open a browser. For example, if you are running a test with hundred users, right? It has to open hundred browsers and uh, measure the response time. So it consumes. Sure, we message. can. Hmm? We can go headless, right? Without browser, also we can. Yeah, yeah. We will discuss that. We will discuss that later, right? So you know, you, with this setup, you know, like what happens is you cannot do uh, large scale testing. So you know, you cannot. Uh, Uh, go with you know uh, test with you know thousands of users with this approach right and now let's see how to use that i launched jmeter and first you have to add a plugin called selenium web driver support okay so you know like i will add a plugin called to this test plan i will add a plugin you know yeah so first go to the plugins so either you can go from this options or you know you can directly click on this icon right this icon that you see on the top right Right, so this also launches plugin manager. So you know you you go to available plugins, right? And you know, like uh, I think I already installed it. So let me, yeah, I already installed it. So if you did not do that, can you launch JMeter and you know search for Selenium Web Driver support? Everyone, I already installed it. That's why you know, like uh, you will not see that under available plugins, right? So. <coughs> Can someone share your screen? Who opened JMeter? Yeah. So can you go to you know? Can you launch this plugin manager? Open a new script, uh, Salim. No, no. Go to file and open a new one. Yeah. Yes. Go to available plugins and search for Selenium. Or else you can draw. Uh, you know. you can scroll down also to find out that right so selenium web driver support yeah now you know like you can uh, so it is installing all the required things right so you can see that at the bottom i say uh, you know install library selenium firefox driver selenium ie driver and so on selenium api and so on right yeah so apply changes and restart and you can see the documentation over here right click on that link to see the github link to see the documentation for that so once you know configure that plugin selenium web driver support plugin right so add to the test plan add a thread group right and to that thread group add Yes. Now, what is the next step? Config element. Config element called Chrome driver. Config. Chrome driver. Uh, you will get this only after importing this, you know, this uh, Selenium web driver support plugin, right? So again, this is developed by Jmeter Plugins. dot org. So here you can see JP. Yes. You know that that is developed by Jmeter Plugins. dot org. So this BZM, right? That is developed by Blazemeter. Blazemeter. So you know, let me add this Chrome driver config. Okay, so I added a Chrome driver config and also add a sampler, sampler called web driver, sampler. web driver sampler. So you get these two only after configuring that plugin, right? You get these two elements only after configuring that plugin. And observe here, once you add the sampler, by default there are some there is some code here, right? There is some JavaScript code to execute. So if you observe this, you know. Let's try to understand this. WDS. What can it be? WDS. Web driver instance. Yeah. Uh, web, WDS web stands for sample. web driver sampler. Okay. Yeah. It stands for web driver sampler. Sir, can you zoom in, please? Yeah. Yeah. It's fine now. Yes. Still, this font looks very small to me. Okay. Let me do one thing. Let me show that in Notepad Plus Plus. Yeah. 
So here you can see. So WDS dot sample result dot sample starter means it will measure the you know at this point this line indicates that you know start the trans uh, start measuring the sample time, right? And WDS dot browser dot get off you know JMeter plugins dot org means you know there is one request you know so and after the observe the third line then you will understand. So WDS dot Sample result dot sample end means it is ending the transaction over here. So what does it do basically? It this will measure the you know time for this URL, uh, this URL JMeter plugins dot org, right? It will measure the client side performance uh, you know metrics also. It will measure the complete response time including browser rendering time, right? So you get this code by default in the you know once you add this web driver sampler, right? You get this code by default. And observe here the script language is JavaScript, and you know it supports other you know uh, other uh, you know scripting languages like BSH means Bean Shell, uh, so uh, Nash or and JXL something, etc. Right? So we generally we can go with this JavaScript, okay? So but it supports Bean Shell scripting and all those are you know all the supported scripting languages are listed here, right? So, so let me save this. Right. So, what is the next step now? I added a sampler, and you know, let's add a listener to see the you know to see the uh, replay log. Right. So, let me add a listener called view results to right. And you know, what are the next steps now? So, download Chrome Driver dot exe and provide the location in Chrome Driver config. So, let me show that Chrome Driver config. If you see the Chrome Driver config, there will be three tabs. The first one is proxy, the other one is Chrome, the other one is experimental. There are three tabs over here. So you need to download this Chrome driver, you know, Chrome driver dot exe, Chrome driver dot exe and provide the location in the Chrome driver config, right? So Google for this, you know, Chrome driver dot exe. Also, you know, Google, I'll Google for this, download Chrome driver dot exe. Go to this downloads, right? And then you can download the latest version. So you have multiple versions over, over here. So you can download any of the latest version. And you know, you select, you know, you, let's go for, I mean, we have to, for each operating system, they have provided a different file. So Chrome driver win32.zip, right? This is for these two are for Mac, right? And this is for Linux operating system. So based on your OS, like, you know, you download the corresponding file. Right, and you know, let me show that. Okay. I extracted it and you know provide this complete path. So provide this complete path to the you know in the Chrome driver config uh, tab, right? In Chrome driver config, go to Chrome tab and here you see right path to Chrome driver, right? So you have to provide the you know the complete path, including this Chrome driver dot exe. I will do that. So the path and you know you have to specify the, the file name also. Okay, just right click and rename and select that. Okay. Right, we are done with this step. Download Chrome Driver Chrome Driver dot exe and provide the location. Right now, add scripts in the web driver sampler. So whatever you want to measure, right? So for which uh, uh, transactions you want to measure the you know client side metrics also, you have to add them in the web driver sampler. So before doing that, that is bit you know uh, bit tricky and it it will you know it take some time. So before doing that, you know, let me replay the script and show you like you know we have some by default you have some code over here, right? Some JavaScript code over here, right? Let me replay that script and show you what happens, right? So view result is empty because I haven't replayed the script and and if you replay the script, right? See here it has opened a browser. 
and you know it closed immediately right and you know let me add you know uh, if you want to we want to see the response times as well right so uh, you know how can we see the response times aggregate report ha huh? aggregate report yeah we can use either summary report or aggregate report right so you can use either of those or both right now let me replay the script again Sure, we got a console. Okay, okay, yeah. Browser has not been configured. 